Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty. This is going to be Escape the Readathon week two. So, it's Monday. <laughs> I, okay, so I know that I had said in my previous vlog that I was going to start this book, and I did. I did, I did start it. Um, so I started The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Chris Broadbent. I'm on page, I only read a couple pages. I got to page 14. I just wanted to like get over like the anxiety of like cracking open the book. Um, so I was just like, I'm just gonna start it so that I can kind of get over that hump, you know? I don't know if it's just me, but like sometimes that's like the hardest part about like getting into a book is literally just cracking it open. Cause there's just so, there's so many expectations with this book that I'm just like nervous about it. Um, so I cracked it open yesterday and I was like, I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna start observing the world, getting like my feet wet with it. So I did start it. I am enjoying it. Um, I don't have many thoughts. I literally read 14 pages. So my plan was that I would continue that today, obviously, but, <laughs> um, film crew made it to the second door. So that means that we got two new prompts. Um, so I can continue reading this book. Obviously I am going to continue reading it but I won't be able to count it for any of the prompts because it, do it doesn't fit for either of the prompts. So I'm gonna have to wait until we get through the door to be able to submit it as kind of like a mood read. So prompt number one is to read a debut novel, um, which I don't think this is one. I don't think so. I think Carissa Broadbent has written a bunch of books. So I don't think this is her debut novel so we have that so that's out and then the second prompt was like uh a book with a title that doesn't have the of a or something like that so like obviously just because of the this is out right <laughs> um so we can't read that i could read fourth wing because it would fit that prompt but i don't really feel like picking that up yet so um i was like okay I'm going to continue reading this anyways, but to kind of like get a book that actually fits the prompts that we have, um, I was thinking of reading this Plastic Monsters by Daniel J. Velope for the second prompt because it's just plastic monsters, none of the words that you're not allowed to have in the title. So it's like a perfect book, plus it's short. Um, so this is a extreme horror. I mainly got it because I love this cover a lot when i saw this cover i was like i need it <laughs> i really need it this is a splatterpunk extreme horror a carnival mirror reflecting our society's perceptions of beauty and image and the ugliness and pain beneath them both an uncomfortable unsettling and unforgettable read so like i do have a lot of strong opinions on like plastic surgery anti-aging and just like the beauty industry in general so i'm like super excited to read plastic monsters um, and I have read another Daniel J. Velope. I read Talia and I really liked it. So I'm really excited about reading this one. It kind of reminds me of Waif by Samantha Kolznick, um, in like this whole like back alley plastic surgery type of thing. But I think this is going to be really fun and I'm excited to see where it goes. So I think I'm going to read this for that prompt. And also I will continue be reading, um, The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Yeah, um, I just won't, I'll just wait to submit this for whenever we go back to mood reading once we unlock the door. Um, so these are the plans. I do still want to read Fourth Wing, um, obviously, <laughs> but I'm going to focus on these two first. So yeah, so those are plans for right now. They might change. It really just depends on like how fast we unlock the door. Um, so it's just like, you know, I just kind of have to ride it out as we kind of move through this readathon. So yeah, I'm gonna start Plastic Monsters um, and try and finish that up as soon as possible so that I can um, log it for the door, <laughs> to unlock the door. So yeah, those are my updates. I'm gonna go to the post office. I have to go drop off some orders and then I'm gonna go pick up my sister from the airport. I will update you guys once I get some more reading done and you know, can give you my thoughts on either or. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys later. So, um, it is 
what is it, Tuesday? Yeah, so I have a quite a busy day today, but I did want to update on my reading. Um, I didn't read as much as I wanted to yesterday because it was my um, boyfriend's day off and I wanted to hang out with him. But I did get a good chunk read of Plastic Monsters by Daniel J. Velope. I'm on page 104. Um, and yeah, so far I am enjoying it. I wish it was a little bit more graphic. Um, I... I don't know like I just wish it was more body horror um and less time in this woman's head with her obsession with beauty um and I get like that's the point like she's obviously obsessed with beauty but um the balance between like her inner monologue and just gruesomeness is a little bit off like there's too much inner monologue and not not enough like disgustingness um, but I'm hoping that now that I'm past like the 50% mark, the rest will just be like unhinged body horror. Because <laughs> that's what I'm really hoping for from this book. There have been horrifying scenes, but nothing that I've just, that has really like shocked me or anything. Um, it just kind of makes me feel like I want more. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's, those are my thoughts generally with Plastic Monsters. Um, I'm gonna take that with me to work and if I have some free time I'll read it and if not I'm going to be on reading sprints on Lauren's channel tonight um, So I will finish that up and then I will jump back into The serpent and the wings of night once I finish plastic monsters I just want to read a book for the prompt so that I can like, you know <laughs> help my team uh, before I go back to mood reading my um book for the serpent and the wings of night which is going to eventually like be loggable for the team you know what i mean but um yeah i really do want to get back to that book so um that's probably what i'm gonna end up reading tonight hoping i get a big chunk of it read tonight um because i still want to read the fourth wing this week so we got to get a move on um <laughs> me stressing myself out already so yeah those are my plans for tonight i will update you guys a little bit later bye So I'm currently on sprints on Lauren's channel for Escape the Readathon, and I finished um, Plastic Monsters on the first sprint. Um, and yeah, this was really disappointing. I'm giving this two stars. Um, it just feels like extremely reductive uh, about like the subject matter. I wasn't expecting much. All things considered, it is an extreme horror. It's sure like I'm not expecting, you know, much discussion on the beauty industry and anti-aging and plastic surgery. Um, but I was just hoping for a little bit and it just feels extremely reductive to just like experience of um, women and femme presenting people just like how how heavy the expectations of beauty can feel on women and femme presenting people um, and this just felt like oh she's prettier than me yeah, I'm mad and I hate her and it just was like super like I don't know it just like bothered me I was like that's not what it's like you know it's not just that simple um and yeah like and aside from that i was like okay whatever like if the discussion is wag like it's a man writing this it's fine but at the same time there wasn't even enough gore to like you know i did like there was nothing like really that crazy that happened no scenes that i was like oh my god that's fucking disgusting considering that this is an extreme horror like it didn't really feel like any of the scenes really went into extreme like it felt very like tame and like literally nothing surprised me like the end was all right it wasn't that crazy didn't really like how it ended anyways um it was just very unsatisfying in that aspect too so <laughs> both aspects that i wanted to kind of be explored in the book were both not great uh the horror wasn't great and also just the overall storyline wasn't great so two stars 
not a fan. I definitely think Talia is a stronger book from Daniel J. Velope, like gore wise and also story wise, because Talia just feels more real, like more like a actual person versus Pamela. Pamela just is literally like, just seems like a caricature of what people would say like, oh, she's high maintenance. And it's just like a caricature of that. Um, and it's just, it's just very like disappointing. So I definitely recommend Talia from this author. I really would not go for Plastic Monsters. It's really not that great. Um, I think the cover is like the best part. <laughs> um, and yeah, so yeah, that's my review of Plastic Monsters. Very disappointing read, but glad that it was short and logged that for prompt, was it one or two? I don't know, whichever one, I think it was two actually. So log that for prompt two, and now I'm back reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I've only read a little bit more. I'm on page 22 now, um, but I'm going to fully jump into this now since we are on our second sprint um, and try and get a big chunk of this read. So, so far, I really don't have many thoughts on it, um, but yeah, I'm excited to continue. Um, I want to see like more vampires. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm gonna continue reading this and I'll update you guys um, once sprints are done and let you guys know like how far along I get in this and my thoughts on it. Hey guys, so we are done with reading sprints and I ended up getting to page 118 of The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I definitely see why people um, like compare this to Sarah J Mass and King of Battle and Blood and books like in the same vein. I do definitely see the similarities, but I do think that this book is like its own, like it's its own story. It doesn't feel like, oh, you're just kind of like redoing the same thing. Like it has its own world build, its own like magic system, its own like vampire lore. So I am enjoying it. Like, and I do see why people compare them, uh, but like not in like a negative way. I'm saying that like, it's just like a good way to kind of like tell someone like oh if you like this book you probably would like this book type of thing um so I definitely do see the similarities um but I am like really captivated by this world build um I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen um I feel like there's a lot of moving parts and I'm excited to see how everything kind of starts fitting together so I know that this book and um the new one that just came out the ashes and the star cursed king or something like that like those are basically going to be a duology like this one and the second book are going to be a duology following these two characters and they're all going to fit into like a six book series which each duology is following like a different set of characters but it's all taking place in the same world so i'm like really excited to see like how big this whole world gets because like it's a six book series like that's crazy so i'm really excited to see how this whole world expands um and i just like really do enjoy like all the like hints we're getting at like how this world works all the creatures the vampire lore um and like the goddesses and gods like i'm excited to see how everything like kind of starts fitting together um and i do really like this whole trial setup um, I do love trials like I, <laughs> I really do like like that comp like that competition with trials and like you know alliances and betrayal like I really do enjoy that so I do really like the setup of just like the trials and stuff I think it's really cool and I am excited to see how things progress um, because this book like literally sets off like running like it's immediately like we are stabbing people <laughs> like it's very much a fast-paced book which i really really appreciate because i just love to be thrown into the action like you can tell me about this world later like let's just get started so i really like that 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 this book is doing this i don't need a lot of build up like let me just let me just figure it out on the way you know so i am really enjoying it um i'm glad that i picked it up i feel like this book would be really fast to read i love the writing style like similar it's not like it's like similar to Sarah J Mass's writing style but like in the same vein that I thought like Sarah J Mass was like easy to read but had like really good quotes that's the same way I feel like about this like the the book is like really easy to read it's not like super flowery or anything like that but it does have some very like impactful quotes like thrown in um and I really appreciate that because it just makes the reading experience a lot better for me when 
the writing style isn't super flowery or like hard to get through like I really love that about it so yeah I'm not comparing this to Sarah J Mass just to like you know as a negative or anything it's just like I'm that's like the most recent like fantasy romance that I've read. Some people were saying they liked even more than Sarah J Mass's books. Other people were like it's very similar to Sarah J Mass books. So like I'm just comparing it to that because that's kind of how it was pitched to me. Um, and so like I can't help but like you know see those similarities because that's how it was introduced to me and because I'm currently reading like um, Akatar. So it just yeah it's not a negative like I'm not trying to say that this book is like copying or anything like that. I think it's its very own separate thing. Please don't take it as a negative. I really am enjoying it and I do think it's its own story. Um, and yeah, I'm like super excited to continue. I love vampires. Can't wait to see what happens. Okay, so there's this one trope that I really don't like in vampire books. Um, and I don't even want to say what it is because like if it does happen, like I don't want to like spoil this like towards the end, but there is a specific trope in vampire books that I don't really like and so I'm hoping that this book doesn't do that and I know I'm being like really really vague about it but I don't want to spoil it for anyone um but there is something that I don't like that sometimes vampire books do and so I'm hoping that this doesn't do that that's my only thing like that's the only thing I'm like please 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 don't do that so we'll see uh, I'll let you know like in general like if it does happen but I'm not going to tell you guys exactly what it is about um, vampire books that I don't like. If you've read this book and you're curious as to what I'm talking about you can definitely DM me and I'll tell you. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So those are my thoughts in general of this book. I'm going to take a shower and go to sleep and hopefully I will continue this book tomorrow um, and also get another big chunk read. I feel like I could read this really fast. Um, and now that I'm like in it, you know, like it's not so like, it doesn't cause me anxiety to like pick this book up because like I'm already in it. So I'm like, okay, let's go. Those are my updates for Tuesday. Um, so I will see you guys tomorrow with hopefully another reading update on The Serpent and the Wings of Night. So yes, I will see you guys later. Hey guys, um, it's really hot in this car. <laughs> I'm going to um, go to the library right now to pick up some holds. Um, I put a hold on volumes of this manga um, and they came in so I'm gonna go pick them up real quick because it's important to pick up your holds from the library right? So I'm gonna go to the library pick up my holds um, and I'll show them to you once I get them. I'm really excited about this manga actually so yeah let's go to the library. And I ended up getting the first three volumes of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe um, and I'm thinking that this might actually work for one of the prompts um, because I think this is their debut um, like manga. Uh, I've been looking it up and it's kind of really hard to find like information on like what was this author's first book. But I think the original volume came out in 2016, like the Japanese version, and then it was translated to English in 2017. Um, so I think that this would make this um, book this author's first book. So if that works, then I could also read this today and input it for the prompt um, for that first prompt. guys so I don't think I've checked in today but today is Wednesday and I am currently reading The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I'm now on page 187. I just started part four which is the Half Moon Trial um, and I am really enjoying the book. I'm like going through it super fast like super fast. It's so easy to read. I freaking love fantasy romance like when it's just so easy to go through get through like it's just truly a blessing like I just love it so much um but yeah it's like super easy to read um I guess I should tell you guys what this book is about <laughs> because I've I know now a little bit more okay so basically this book follows Araya who is the adopted human daughter of the nightborn king of vampires um you know he's like the top dog and he found her when she was little and he just kind of took her in and just raised her in this like really insane world where like everybody wants to kill her because she's human and it's just a bunch of vampires so she has been just since 
she arrived to this palace like she has always been taught how to be a weapon how to basically you know guard herself against this world that is essentially always trying to kill her so she's just always grown up being a warrior essentially right um, and the whole time she's kind of been training to enter this tournament that is hosted by the goddess of the vampires which is Nyaxia um, and she basically hosts this tournament and you know a bunch of vampires enter it and it's called the Kajari and whoever wins the Kajari basically gets to ask for a wish from the goddess of vampires. Um, and so obviously Oraya has entered it and she plans to win because she plans to ask a wish from the goddess of Nyaxia to make her powerful um, and essentially so that she can stop fearing for her life just trying to get power after growing up with no power and always fearing the world. Um, so we're following her through that and the Kajari is basically organized in trials. So I don't know how many trials there are exactly. I think there's five. Um, and I'm on the, I'm about to start the third trial. And I really enjoy that formatting. Like I mentioned before, like I really do enjoy the trials. Honestly, like this book is really like very light on the romance so far, like 38% in, like it's really, really light on the romance. It's mostly focused on the world build um, and just like the overall plot. This plot is very complex. There's a lot of moving parts um, and I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of very intense betrayals. Um, there's also a kind of a threat of war looming. So there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of things to learn because like the magic system, the goddesses, different types of vampires. Like there's just a lot of world build happening, which I really, really like because I love world builds. Like it's one of my favorite parts about fantasies. I just love seeing a completely new world. And I really like the way that the, the author is doing it because it's not info dumping. Like you're learning about the world as she kind of progresses through these trials and whenever like something kind of related to a world to the world build would be like mentioned, like it expands on that. So it never feels like she's like just dumping a bunch of information at you. It's cleverly woven through the story which I love appreciate that so much it's really easy to read it's really fast paced um, I feel like the trials like being kind of like division of the book really helps with just like the pacing of the story it feels like it's going by really fast um, the only thing is that it is doing the thing that I don't like vampire books doing but it's not enough for me to like dislike the story at all or want to take off like a star rating off of it um, I'm not like surprised I guess that it's doing it but I'm not like super happy but I'm like whatever about it I'm like okay whatever a lot of vampire books do it so it's not like unheard of or surprising so I'm just like whatever I just hope that it wasn't but if it is it's fine whatever whatever you know um, so <laughs> yeah um, I won't talk more about that because um, I don't want to spoil anything but yeah I'm going to continue reading. I'm now on part four, about to start the Half Moon Trial. I feel like this trial is going to be very intense, but I'm excited, you know, like I'm excited. I love vampires. Just love reading about them. It's such a fun time. Um, and I can't wait to see how this whole like war kind of plays a role into the story as well and just how the trials proceed and stuff. And also obviously the love story. I think rating wise, like I'm at like a four star right now. Um, I think I need to get further in. I think I need a little bit more, um, like, I feel like I need a little bit more drama, um, between everybody. Like, I just feel like I need some, like, reveals to be had so that I can be like, oh my god, five stars, you know what I mean? But right now I'm, like, at a four star vibe, uh, but I, I know that this book easily could reach a five star, you know? So, yeah, I am enjoying it. I'm gonna continue reading. Hopefully I will update you guys later tonight with like another big reading update done um, because I really do want to finish this soon because I still have to get to the fourth wing this week. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I also did read another book for um, the readathon. I read The Girl from the Other Side volume one which I showed you guys. Oh I have checked in yeah because I showed you guys that I was going to go to the library. Um, but yeah, so I read this. This was really good. I'm like really excited about continuing the series. I didn't give it a rating because I'm not reading manga until like I finish the series. I just think that's better for my brain, you know? Um, but I really, really liked it and I do have the next, 
I do have the next two volumes, so I definitely will be reading these soon because that first one was really good. Um, it definitely hooked me and I am excited to see how it progresses. So those are my reading updates. I'm going to go back to reading um, and yeah, hopefully I can finish The Serpent in the Wings of Night tomorrow. That is the goal to finish tomorrow. Um, so fingers crossed we can do it. Um, but yeah, I will update you guys later. Hey guys, so I'm wearing my Edward shirt, um, <laughs> in celebration of me finishing The Serpent and the Wings of Night. So I checked in last night with you guys, and then after I checked in with you guys, I stayed up reading this, I think till like about 12, and I was like, I think like maybe like 90 or 100 pages from the end. Um, but I got really sleepy and I really wanted to like enjoy the end because I knew it was going to get very intense. So I woke up this morning and I finished up the book. Um, and wow, it was so good. Um, I give this book five stars. No surprise there, honestly. I would say for the first half of the book, I was like chilling at a four star, um, rating for the book. Um, but once we kind of like get past like the half moon trial, and all of that, I was like, oh, five stars, five stars. And there's a specific moment when I decided that it was going to be a five star read. Um, obviously I can't tell you <laughs> exactly what was happening, but there is a very specific moment when I was like, this is a five star book. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was just like obsessed. I was like, I need to know what's going to happen. So I just like sped through it. This book is so easy to read. like. It's just so fast and I love that because I really just needed like a fast paced book. Like I just, I love fast paced books. Like I just love it. There's so much action. There's so many fight sequences. The trials are really fun. I just really like the way it breaks up the story with the trials. I did write some notes on like what I wanted to talk about. So let me pull those up so that I don't just keep repeating myself. Um, <laughs> so, um, by the end of the book, I can already tell that the second one I'm probably going to like more than this book because the way that this ends sets up for a bunch of tropes that I really like in my fantasy romance so that so I know that the second book I'm just going to be like, hell fucking yeah. There's just so many things that happen towards the end of this book that it's just like, holy shit. Like, there's so many reveals. There's so much like conflict. There's so many betrayals and it's just like, what the fuck is going to happen in the next one? Like, I cannot wait to find out. All the characters in this book are so morally gray. Like, there's just so many different things that these char characters could do because there's just so much room for them to, like, do either great things or horrifying things. Like, the way they oscillate between both of them is just so wild because, like, a lot of people do really horrible things in this book. And at the same time, like, you can't help but root for them because, like, you know why they're doing these horrible things. Um, it's just, like, it's just, I love morally great characters. Like, I really, really do. And this book is full of them. All our characters do some really fucked up things. And the way that they rationalize it is just so wild. But their intentions are also good. But also some, char some intentions are really bad. Like, it's just... Oh, it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. So there's so many different ways that this series could continue. And I'm like really excited about seeing it. I also really did like Nyaxia. Like I loved how brutal she is. Like I was like, wow. Well, <laughs> I think she is like a really good mirror for what could happen to someone when they go through so much heartache and so much like hardships and like the kind of person that you can come out of being after like stuff like that happens to you um I didn't know we were gonna get like Nyaxia as like a character herself but I do really appreciate that we do and I just I really liked her character I really really liked Nyaxia and I can't wait to see like how she ends up playing a role just in everything I think the world building has done so well like I just love that this book starts off just like we don't know shit like you're just thrown in there and you're and it's like you're gonna fucking figure this shit out and that is the type of world build that I like like I just like to be thrown in there and like just tell me things as we move forward I don't need to know everything 
I'll figure it out on my own. And I just love when books have that type of world build and this definitely has that. So like, there's like no preparing you for it. They just like throw you in there and then they start throwing terms around and you're just like, what the fuck? There is a glossary. I didn't look at it because I didn't want to be spoiled for anything, but there is a glossary. Um, but go into it, like you're not gonna know shit. <laughs> you're not gonna know anything, but it's okay. You're going to learn everything and it's all very satisfying. You know what I mean? And nothing ever feels info dumping. Like we're just running full fucking steam ahead we're gonna see shit go down. So my only thing, it's not really a thing, um, it's also I think a reason why I think I'm gonna like the second book more, but I wanted more banter between um, Oraya and Rain. I feel like, well this book isn't really, like it is a fantasy romance, but like the romance is like really, I guess I don't even want to say slow burn because I didn't feel like there was like that much build up for it. I just feel like there's just so many more important things you know what I mean like there's more important things to focus on and I do appreciate that because I'm like yeah no it makes sense like these people are fighting for their lives like I get it I get it um but like I feel like I wanted more banter and like more build up for their relationship we do have some banter but like not enough to have me like squealing and giggling type of shit you know and I wanted more of that and I feel like I'm gonna get that in the second book because of the ending the the situation they find themselves in the end of this book I feel like sets up for me getting exactly what I want <laughs> more banter um more love and hate like I I feel like I'm gonna love the second book <laughs> but I did want like more banter between them more build um between their romance um like I did enjoy it like I thought it was fun but like I just wanted more from their romance but I feel like this is definitely more of like a fantasy romance over a romance fantasy, you know what I mean? So like I'm not like mad about it. It's just like I feel like I'm gonna really get that in the second book. I don't know why, I just it just feels like that to me. I will say though, the cave scene, I was like... The cave scene was top tier vampire content. Top tier vampire content. There's only one like smut scene in this, but that one, I was like... all right all right um it was good I, I it was really good i did enjoy it the cave scene though i think was my favorite i was just like that's the appeal of the vampire you know what i mean so yeah i love the cave <laughs> i was happy when they were in the cave so yeah i did really really enjoy this and i'm like super super excited to continue with the series i'm going to read the novella first which is six scorched roses i think I'm gonna read that first, then I'm gonna read the second book, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, I think. I might be completely butchering all these titles, but I'm gonna read the novella, then the second book in the series, and then I'm gonna read the standalone that also is within this world, Slaying the Vampire Conqueror or something like that. Um, so yeah, I need to order all those books. I put them all on my Amazon cart and I was like, I looked at the total and I was like, maybe relax a little bit, you know? Um, uh, but that is kind of like the reading order I'm gonna follow. Um, but yeah, this was really, really good. I see why everyone loves it. I get the hype. It is well deserved. If you liked King of Battle and Blood, if you liked Sarah J. Mass, any of Sarah J. Mass books really, fantasy romance, this one. Vampires. Oh, and the world is so good. Like the world is so unique. It's so good. It's so good. So yeah, I'm really happy I finished this up. For my next read, I'm hosting I'm hosting sprints today. So for my next read, I'm going to start Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, which is also a super, super hyped fantasy romance right now. It is a Military Academy Dragon Riders fantasy romance. My first dragon book. I'm so excited. Um, and look at these sprayed edges. I don't think I'm going to tap this book because I don't want to like destroy these. But... Yeah, maybe I'll just highlight and stuff, but I don't think I'll tap. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. So I'm going to start this tonight on sprints. And so far, so good. You know, we are three books in. Um, and this one was a chunky one, and so is this one. So yeah, I'm going to try and finish that before this week ends. Um, and then I don't even know what I'm going to read next. I have no thoughts. Just vampires. <laughs> just that cave scene. <laughs> Okay, I will update you guys later because my camera is about to die, so bye.
Hey guys, so excuse the appearance. I just got back from the gym. Oh my god, there's a giant fly in here. Um, but I wanted to update you guys on yesterday's reading. So I did host sprints. Um, they were really fun. And I started Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. And I ended up getting to chapter 9, which is 104 pages. So I made a good dent on this. Um, I think the total book is like 498 or almost 500 pages. Um, but yeah, I am actually really enjoying this. Um, it is definitely like the first 10% is definitely very YA trope heavy. Um, the characters feel very YA, but like the story itself isn't that YA. Um, I don't know if this makes any sense. But um, you can definitely get a sense of like YA characters and YA reactions, which I was nervous about because I don't like reading YA. But I think this book like does a good balance of that. And it does kind of make me feel like nostalgic for when I did read YA. Uh, but the story itself and the characters seem like a little bit older. I know that it sounds contradictory, but like there's like a vibe. I think once you, if you do pick it up, I think like it will make sense what I'm saying. So the first like 50 pages of the book were really hard for me to get into because the way that the author is like introducing the world is through our main character, Violet Sorengale, which tell me that is not the most YA <laughs> name you've ever heard, Violet Sorengale, who is going to be a dragon rider. Like it's just so YA, but it's fine. Like it's fine. It's fine. Um, so we get introduced to the world through her because she was training to be a scribe for her whole life. Um, and then last minute, her mom's like, you're not going to be a scribe. Um, none of my kids are going to be scribes. You're going to be dragon riders because she's the, I think, commander of this like military thing. Um, and so like she basically forces her daughter to become a dragon rider, even though she's like never trained for that. You know, she gets thrown into this and, um... Like the first, so one of her like coping mechanism is to recite facts um, about things that she knows, right? So through that like anxiety coping mechanism, you essentially start getting the world build. But for me, it was just too much. Like it was too much information at once. Um, I liked how in The Serpent in the Wings of Night, you're just getting like information like in pieces like in chunks um and you're getting to understand how the world works um alongside the action of the plot uh but for this like it just felt like she threw like all this information about this world and the warring kingdoms all at once and i was just like trying to like grapple with, ev <laughs> with everything that she was saying when she's kind of having this like coping mechanism for her anxiety that it just kind of like took me out of the story because i was trying to like understand like how everything lays and like okay so we've got this kingdom and that and then they've got dragons and the other one's got this other thing and so it just kind of like <laughs> got a little bit confusing um not that it was just complicated it's just like my brain was just like what like what you know it was too much for me like at once um so yeah that the first 50 pages did throw me off and it was very slow going for me it took me like two sprints to get to like 50 pages um, and each sprint was like 45 minutes. So it took me quite a while for me to get into those past those 50 pages. But after that, like the world is moving a lot smoother. We're learning about different things. Um, our characters put into different situations that kind of give us peeks into like different conflicts and different moving parts of the whole world. So I like it better now, like now that I'm past that kind of like, it wasn't it didn't it wasn't that it was like super info dumping but it did feel to me a little bit like that just because the way that it was like listed in the book um so now that we're kind of over it and we're learning more of the world through action scenes and just through kind of like um school settings like it's easier for me to understand and it's easier for me to get through so like i started reading really fast um and so like i'm really enjoying now that I'm like 100 pages in, I'm just like, oh my god, like what's gonna happen? And we've met the love interest and I am so obsessed. Like it's gonna be so good. Um, but because this book has these beautiful sprayed edges, I can't tab it. 
I was going to highlight, but I'm like, what's the point of highlighting if like I'm not even gonna know where that highlight even is or what it even pertains to because I'm not tabbing it. So I am think I'm just gonna read it. I'm not gonna annotate. I don't wanna ruin these edges with tabs. So I think I'm just going to just read, <laughs> which is not something I usually do when I'm reading like a fantasy world. Like I do really enjoy annotating, but for this one, I think I'm just going to skip that. Um, but it will be better for me because it'll mean that I'll get through the book way faster because I won't be like stopping to like highlight and annotate or whatever. Um, if it gets like a really good scene and I'm like, I need to like mark this, maybe I'll, I, I think I'll mark like up here, even though there are sprayed edges like up here, but it's not the dragon. So it won't be ruining that design. So if I do want to tab something specific, I'll just tab up on this way. Um, but it would have to be something really important or really good <laughs> or else I'm not going to tab it. But I am enjoying it. I do want to, um, move forward. Um, I really want to get to the dragons. Um, I have some... So I have some guesses as to some dragon interactions that I'm looking forward to. I'm really excited to just get into the dragons because like I mentioned before, this is going to be my first dragon book and I'm just like really excited to kind of like just interact with the dragons. Like that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, and this book also kind of reminds me of the Poppy War, not in like, it's not as brutal obviously as the Poppy War, but like in the same setting where you have like this military academy, that was one of the parts of the Poppy War that I loved was when they were in like the school um, and learning about strategy and like discussing strategy. There are some parts where we get that type of discussion and it just like reminds me of like my favorite parts of the Poppy War. Um, so I'm really like liking that military aspect of this whole thing. I love the strategy sessions. I really love the enemies to lovers, like feuding families type of love interest. I think it's gonna be really good. So I am like really enjoying like the setting and the characters and I do like Violet. Um, I think she is really funny. She does have a disability. So there's disability rep in here. Um, and I do like how she stands up for herself, even though like everyone's telling her like, this is a bad idea, like you shouldn't be here. And she's just like, you know what? Like, I'm gonna fucking do it. Like, yeah, I didn't study to be here, but like, I'm not like, I'm not like as weak as you guys are making it out to be, you know, like, um, and I just really like her character. I really do. I love how she's just so funny. Like she's so witty. She's so funny. She can throw daggers and it's just like, I'm rooting for her like I'm rooting for her and I'm rooting for the guy like I first time he comes up I was already like him 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 so I really do love the love interest I'm just so excited for their dynamic like truly cannot wait so yeah those are my updates on the fourth wing uh, I am going to continue this today and hopefully get another big chunk read because this book is so easy to read. It just goes by so fast. Um, and once I got past like those 50 pages, I was just like going through it. Um, so I definitely think that either today or tomorrow I will finish this book. Um, and probably like once I get even further because everyone's talking about how it's just like super addictive to read and you just like wanna binge it. I'm down to binge the book. Like truly I am so down. So um, yeah, those are my plans. I plan to binge this. <laughs> I will update you guys later. it is Saturday <laughs> and I can't believe I'm saying this but I finished fourth wing by Rebecca Yaros yesterday what I checked in I had I was like a hundred pages right so that means I read like almost 400 pages yesterday don't ask me how I did it there's crack in here okay like mel and cassidy were right there is crack in here okay because like it is wild how fast i read this like it actually doesn't really make sense like two plus two does not equal four okay like what happened what happened to me what happened to my mind while i was reading this i don't know i truly do not know i lost my mind like i truly truly lost my mind Okay, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right, so 
I definitely do agree that this is new adult, but it's very YA trope heavy. Aside from the tropes, like even the way the characters like rapidly become like some of your favorite characters um, like they do with YA, that has whatever YA crack that does to your brain, this has it, okay? Because like the way that I was like ready to die for all these characters, like Zayden, like I was ready to kill for that man. Like immediately he came on, pa on page and I was like, no, yeah, I love him. Like I love him already. Like I love him, okay? <laughs> this has that YA character like that you just can't help but love. Like you just love them immediately. And like everyone in this book, I'm just like, I love everyone. Like literally all of them. I'm like, oh, and it's so sad. I just remembered who died and I was like, I just got really depressed. I just love everyone. I love everyone. The dragons. Oh my god, y'all. Like the fucking dragons, okay? I have no basis for comparison because I've this is my first dragon book. But like, Taryn? Oh, I love him. Like, you don't understand. I would die for that dragon. Like, I would die for that dragon. Like, he is the coolest mythical creature I have ever read about. I love him. Like, he is so cool. Oh my god, I would die for him. I would die for him. I would die for him. I would die for everyone in this book, truly. The fucking dragons, though. Like, just the dragon, the premise of this whole fantasy world is just so fucking cool. Like, that's all I have to say. It's just fucking cool. Like, it's cool. There's no other word. It's just cool. It's so cool. Um, I fucking love dragons, okay? Like, and now any other dragon book I read has to live up to the dragons in here. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so good. It's so good, okay? Um, <laughs> the romance in this was so fucking good. It was so, like, okay. This is gonna sound like, it's gonna sound contradictory to everything I've ever said in my entire life. But, okay, the romance in this feels YA in the sense of, like, how it has you giggling and squealing when these characters interact, but not in the way that there's, like, this, like, annoying, like, back and forth, um, like, uh, yearning. I hate that. I hate the yearning of YA. I hate, like, the awkwardness that surrounds sex. I hate all of that, which is why I don't like YA romance. But because while the characters kind of like fit the archetype of YA characters, they don't react to sex and love and anything like that as YA characters would. They handle it more adult. And I love that. The combo of that is perfect for me because Violet is just, she's just so like self-possessed. She knows what she wants. She knows what she wants out of a relationship. She knows what she can give and what she can't. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, dude, I love her. Like, truly, Violet is just, <sighs> she's amazing. Truly, she's amazing. Like, the way that she knew what she could give and what she could take from this relationship had me on my knees. Like, for both of them, I was like, you guys are like, yes, like, I love you both. So it's so weird because like it has the YA tropes that you would think like, oh, I don't want to read a YA, but it's not YA. Like that's, I don't know how to like frame it any other way until you read it. But like if you grew up reading a lot of YA like I did, and you are very familiar with all the YA tropes and stuff, like there's like a little bit of nostalgia you get for reading this book because like it reminds you of that part of your life but it doesn't give you that annoying relationship that YA does for me personally, like no no shade if you like YA romance. Um, but like for me, it gave me the YA nostalgia without the angstiness and the yearning and the like back and forth that YA romance does. Um, it gave me like a mature relationship with YA trope built, tropes with, with the characters in the world building. I. I loved it. I thought it was fucking great. Like, truly, 
fantastic. I totally get the hype. It's definitely a five star read for me. Like, I cannot wait until November to read the second book. Like, I need that shit now. Like, now. Thank God it's only like months away and not like a whole ass year, but like still like I'm like at the edge of my seat. I need to know what's gonna happen. I need Zayden to have, I need that second book to be dual POV. Like it has to be dual POV or I will, I will lose my mind if it's not dual POV because I love the man. I do, I love Zayden. Like anytime he came on screen, I was giggling. Like I was like, oh my God, like Zayden, you know, like I, I love that man. And anytime Violet and him were together, like, I was just, like, losing my marbles. And, like, the smut scenes in this were so good. And I was just, like, I was, like, I was losing my mind. I truly was losing my mind. Um, so I need more of that in the second book, duh. Um, but, yeah, it was just, oh, my God, in the ending of the, this book. It's not a cliffhanger ending, but, like, just, like, all the developments, I was just, like, oh, shit. Like, the second book is going to be fucking good. Like, the second book has so much stuff it's going to deal with that I just cannot wait for the second book to come out. Like, I truly cannot. It's gonna be so fucking good. Oh my god. Like, I'm... It was... This book is just so good. <laughs> I have no other thoughts except that it's just fantastic. Like, it truly is worth the hype that it's getting. I truly believe that there's crack in this book. Um, it's fantastic. Like, um... Rebecca Yaros really found the middle ground, the perfect middle ground for giving you YA tropes in a d new adult content. Like, she nailed it. Like, nailed it. Um, so, yeah. I loved it. I truly did. This vlog was filled with bangers, okay? I like the romance in Fourth Wing more than I like the romance in Serpent and the Wings of Night. Um, because, like, the way that I was, like, giggling and squealing between Zayden and Violet, like, I woke up my dog, like, 50 times with my scream. Like, she was looking at me, like, side eye type of shit, you know? And I was like, I'm so sorry, but, like, you don't understand what I'm going through right now. Um, but I loved the romance in this. I thought it was just exquisite. Oh my god, the slow burn. I was living for it. Um, I loved it. Um, <laughs> anyways, it was great. It was great. Um, I... Can't wait for all the next books I'm going to read. Um, so, I'm going to shut the fuck up about the fourth wing. I mean, fourth wing, not the fourth wing. Fourth wing because, oof, I need a paperback edition of this so bad because, like, the way that I couldn't tab actually hurt me because there were so many things I wanted to tab. So, I need a paperback that I can tab so, with, so I don't ruin these beautiful sprayed, ed sprayed edges. But, like, <sighs> wow. Okay, I'm done talking about fourth wing. Okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, so, yeah, it's good. It's good. I vouch for this. Um, I, yeah, I loved it. Anyways, moving on. <sighs> I will be insufferable when the second book comes out. I hope you know this, guys. Like, I will be extremely annoying. Okay, that's it, that's it. I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm done. I'm gonna put this away. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing all right here's the thing i ordered six scorched roses is it six i think it's six scorched roses by uh carissa broadbent because i want to read that before i read um the ashes and the star cursed king or something like that whatever i ordered it right um it's coming today okay so just keep that in mind i might read that um but i have a secret vlog that i have to film this weekend um, I don't have to film it this weekend, but I want to so that it's ready. So I'm thinking I'm gonna end this vlog here and then start my secret vlog for the weekend and then start a new Escape the Readathon vlog on Monday. And probably then is when I will continue with my Carissa Broadbent Crown of Nyaxia like read um, of the series. So I'm thinking that's a plan. Um, so, I think I'm going to stop filming for this vlog here and start editing and get it ready for upload um, and start my secret vlog, which will come out in like a week and a half-ish. So, you guys will see that. It's just, um, can't really talk about it right now. <laughs> so mysterious. <sighs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, but yeah, so that I think that's going to be my plan for this week and the next. Um, so, what did we read in this vlog? We read... 
The Girl from the Other Side, love. Uh, Ser the Serpent in the Wings of Night, love. And Fourth Wing, love. So, like, just a banger-filled reading vlog. Like, I... I just had the time of my life this week. Truly, like, I lived this week. I truly had the best reading week. And, like, I'm just writing a high right now. Like, of, like, ha having back-to-back -to -back two five-star fantasy romance books. Like, I'm, like, flying high. I don't want to come down. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that That's it. That's my update. Um... I'm gonna go now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read Fourth Wing or The Serpent in the Wings of Night. What were your thoughts on them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Ugh, let's talk about it if you loved it though because like I have theories abound for the next books. So <laughs> yeah, um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep with more content from me. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.